Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabikoff, and we are back in the cellar with Marquis Selections and their managing director, Chris Cribb. Thank you for inviting us back into your cellar. Hey, Bonnie. Great to be here. It is great to be here. We began earlier a discussion about pairing wines with cheese, and we are in the holiday season. We're going to be doing a lot of entertaining. Let's make this really exciting. What do great. you suggest? Sure. You know, when we were talking about what we can do to kind of help educate people for the holiday right. season, I said, you know, the, the new high bee that they built up in Liberty has a great Amazing. international cheese section. Yep. And um, everybody knows that wine and cheese are great friends. They do. They're good friends. Yeah. But it's kind of an intimidating thing. So yes. I wanted to give people a few go-to areas that they can uh, can try. Okay. A couple of cheeses that I think are some of my favorites. Mm -hmm. And um, would one of them be a brie? It is a brie. Oh, okay. You know, that's a lot of people's favorites. Yeah, well, You're not going to go wrong if you have a brie as yeah. one of your cheeses. True, true. Okay. And, and, uh, and a Chardonnay, which a lot of people like. And everybody like. loves Chardonnay, so, so let's talk about why you put these together. Sure. Well, the first uh, the first cheese here, let's show this beautiful cheese off. This oh. is the uh, French mm -hmm. uh, St. Andre's Triple Cream Brie. I, I can't control myself. Oh. I'm so sorry. You can get in okay. there. It's, um, uh, you know, when we look at the breeze that they have, there's all oh kinds of that go from the, the softest to more with a little more rind. This one, um, it's I like just love cake. The, yeah, <laughs> so good. The, 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 the richness with the um, oh. that very soft flavor. This one's been out just enough time so that Please it's, remember to take your cheeses out a little before yes. serving so that the flavors just bloom that way. Absolutely. So, you know, we. We wanted to do this with, we did this with the Chardonnay. Okay. So. Mm. The, and, the, and this, you know, this is not a, a, an unusual pairing, so it's very accessible to your guests. Very accessible to the guests. No you know, this Chardonnay is from Australia, so it's got a little bit of the um, oak aging to it. And buttery. And buttery. Mm. And it's got a little bit of that um, kind of tropical fruit flavors, I think. So I, now I have to take another piece of the cheese. You know, I've seen people do some really exciting things with brie. I've seen them put it in the oven for just like a few minutes mm -hmm. and top it with a honey or preserve and then maybe throw some toasted pistachios on top of that. And it's going to work beautifully with the Chardonnay because it holds up to richness and sweet at the same time. It does. The reason that I think that this worked is because of the simplicity of the cheese. Mm -hmm. It didn't have those extra tarragon, bright, big flavors. Mm -hmm. um, where one of the things that we looked at was one that had a, a pepper rind around the outside. And I love black no, pepper. Right, and there's, and there's nothing wrong. I just saw a cheese that had been dipped into ground espresso yeah. beans. But this provides the versatility to do whatever. Right. You know, and that, that pepper cheese, mm -hmm. as we went through, we tasted other wines, it actually almost went better with a red wine because it had that. enough spice to it that you wanted to do something different. Mm -hmm. so, so when you're thinking about that, just just like when you're thinking about pairing food and wine, yes. the sauce is really important. You know, It's not just what do we do with chicken, but what are the ingredients with the chicken that are going to determine the right. wine you And pair. an orange chicken is a lot different from a uh, Tarragon yeah. chicken yep. than from a mm -hmm. beer can chicken. Beer can chicken, <laughs> okay. But, um, well, that is that is just heaven. And, and again, uh, Brie is such a crowd pleaser, and going with something versatile like this and with this particular Chardonnay, sure. I don't know if you've ever had the good fortune of having a grilled cheese sandwich with brie in it, but it's just, it's, I, I just, have. it's it, just amazing. It's one of yes, my you favorites. have actually, yes, yep, so. it's amazing. All right, so what what next okay. for our cheese board? So we um, we are going to a little bit stronger cheeses, okay. and we we'll have brave. gone yeah, mm -hmm. to a place that not probably many people in the U.S. have been to before. This is in Australia. Okay, we don't usually think of this in, no. No, um, well, this is a small island off the south coast of Australia called King Island, okay. and this is called the Roaring Forty Blue Cheese. Okay. So it, um, the- We know about the Roaring Twenties now. Yeah. The Forties apparently roared in Australia. Okay. You know, they, okay. We're in a different time period, okay. and that was right True. before the uh, the war down there. Right. They, um, they had a really booming economy down there, and this, uh, 
uh, this place became a, a dairy uh, on this small island, okay. and now it's known for making that honey and a little bit of wine. Honey, yeah. well, but, but you know how many people mix honey with, you know, a toasted nut when you're doing cheese. Okay, so this is a blue, would you call this yes, a blue this cheese? Yes, blue cheese. This okay. is a strong vein blue cheese. All right, honey. not for everybody, but... Yeah, and this is one of the reasons why we paired this one up, um, and you can kind of see those deep that deep blue cheese in there mm -hmm. uh, is because the wine that we've got here is the uh, Silver Wings Vincenzo, mm. which is our most collectible Australia. wine from Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a blend of Shiraz and Mouvedre, mm -hmm. and it's, it's an intense wine. So that would need intense. It's an intense mm -hmm. cheese to go with it. So this is... Mm -hmm. To your health. Mm -hmm. So this has got that, that old vine. Mouvedre is known for being kind of rich, a little bit leathery, longer palate. Mm -hmm. um, it's very, very smooth. It is smooth for being such a full-bodied wine. It's smooth. Now this cheese, you know, it, I, I've also seen these cheeses sliced and put on salads. Absolutely. And so you don't normally think of red wine with salad, but that salad to me would have this wine next to it. Well, and this is kind of an homage as well to one of the best um, classical food wine pairings, mm -hmm. which is um, we're going to be tasting a Stilton blue cheese. Mm -hmm. okay. It's a blue cheese Comparison. and a mm -hmm. pork wine. Port wines uh, from Portugal have been a classical pairing with these type of cheeses for a long time. Mm -hmm. We went a little non-classical, so th this is a wine that you can have with your steak. Yes. And then after you've had that glass with your steak and you're going, all right, what am I going to have for a little nightcap mm -hmm. at the end? Pull out a nice deep blue vein cheese. Mm -hmm. And I thought both of the comparisons would give you a little bit of different ah, flavors. So okay, so we're, we're going to compare both, and you know many people now are serving a cheese course sure. as, as part of the dinner and to have this variety of cheeses with a few wines is almost better than dessert or oh, sometimes yeah. it's in the place of dessert. All right, now we're going to taste. Tell us the difference again. Sure, this is the Royal Blue Stilton. So this okay. is a English cheese. Mm -hmm. You see, you know, when you look at the, the color here, there's not quite as much of a vein in this cheese. No. A little bit more of a cream Significantly flavor. different in flavor. Yeah. Yet, you're saying both work with this I think both red of these cheese. Work. I mean, yeah. red wine? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so more creamy well, more right. butter yeah it's it goes you are right a um, this is like the intense I cow this is like think the because these are okay that that's true but and this wine is is working really well with both of them yeah. all right I mean, if you wanted to try something to go, all right, why, what doesn't work? Try this Chardonnay with the, with the yeah, blue that. That wouldn't work. Like, no, oh, no, no. Um, why did I do that? Okay, now let's talk about collecting. Sure. You know, people are intimidated by collecting art and also by collecting wine, and they're. It's a wonderful thing to do. It's yeah. a wonderful thing to share with people. How do you even begin to approach the thinking? to collect wine. Well, I think that there's a couple tips that I've been given that I, I really love to pass along. Uh, one, I believe, is that when you go to and you have a memory of something, uh, mm -hmm. wine is a great thing to be able to bring that memory back because you're also doing what you did then with mm -hmm. senses. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, so special occasions. Special occasions, mm -hmm. great thing for wine. Um, if you're visiting and traveling places, it's a way to bring back that place you were traveling mm -hmm. from. There's a lot of places in the world where you can travel and they'll ship stuff back to you, so it's they not will. here. Not a trouble. Not a big trouble. Nope. Um, and what I like to do in a lot of situations is to buy three bottles. Okay. I call it the rule of three. The rule of three. And the, okay. the idea being that um, I'm going to get it home, and like the greedy kid that uh, <laughs> just got his whole I, bag of candy yep. from Halloween. Yep. Can't I wait. get home and I'm not one of those bottles. Mm -hmm. So know that I'm going to probably open one of those bottles by the end of next year. Yeah, you got so, it. You know, so, all right, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I bought it. Mm -hmm. I bought three so that I could open one of them then. And then I know that I can probably open one in two years, three years, 
four years, a couple five years. And, and you could also plan, you know, there's a special occasion where I've got an important anniversary or birthday coming sure, up. Sure, sure. So you're not deprived by having to hold all of it. So if you have three, you can make that happen. Yeah, you can. And the, the other thing that I find is I look at white wine and red wine a little differently okay. because their aging qualities are different. Right. Um, most white wine is not built to age as long. Right. Uh, there are some Chardonnays, French Chardonnays, California Chardonnays in some places, some uh, German Riesings and things that are meant to age a longer time, but really for the most part, five not. to ten years is that's, really kind that's, of you're pushing. The, the, okay. the tops pushing it on wines. Um, most of the reds probably would go a little bit further than that, and it's it's a price point continuum. So okay. if you're going to be spending ten dollars on a bottle, it's not meant to be aged. If you're going to be spending okay. twenty-five dollars on a bottle, probably is meant to be aged a little bit. And what you'll see that goes downhill like that is wines that aren't taken care of. Okay. And we and we've talked about that storing them down so if the cork stays moist. Yep. Light and heat are its enemy, Absolutely. and so we won't do anything to be neglectful or abusive to our wines yeah. and really your basement laying on its side or just wherever you put off to one side if you don't have a wine refrigeration have, unit you don't have a cellar you don't have the refrigeration the basement is a, is a nice area especially in the midwest some places in the country in the world don't have that luxury yeah. um you know a, a closet that's away from dark. stuff and dark is always a good spot um, try to remember vibration too. You don't oh. want to be right next to a door that's always slamming shut because you're going to be shaking the bottles. Uh, I just that's, want something. That's we don't want to one. do that. So, so we want it in a place in the house that doesn't have a lot of movement, kids running around, jumping up and down. And Okay, basically we're just going to take really good care of this yeah, wine. Yeah. And you've done that also with your selection process. Your portfolio has received recognition from Wine Spectator. How did you do that? Well, yeah, Wine Spectator, um, Wine Enthusiast, Robert Parker Magazine have all looked at our portfolio as being a great value for the money. Mm -hmm. you know, we, have, we don't have 100 point wines on their 100 point scale, mm -hmm. but we do have a lot of wines that are above 85 to 92 points. Which Very is that, respectful you know, ratings, especially the prices that you deliver. Right. You know, this is a $15 Chardonnay. This is a uh, $30 um, Shiraz Mouvedre blend. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Wine Spectator said 92 points and 89 points mm -hmm. on both of them. So mm -hmm. it's, I think the, the idea of what they look at in our portfolio and they do overall is the value for the money, the unique regions that we're bringing them mm -hmm. from, and uh, the fact that we're committed to a uh, smaller batch uh, artisan winery. And that you really care about the organic, sustainable practices of your winemakers. Absolutely, because what you find is that uh, by being a shepherd, to work in the vineyard with no pesticides, no herbicides, mm -hmm. using the, um, the modern technology we have, to their, to their advantage, they're able to get really ripe fruit, uh, not change the flavor of the fruit, mm -hmm. bring it in very, very fresh, fruity, and uh, and then shepherd it from there through the winemaking process. Uh, just a, uh, a lovely way to be able to to do almost any type of agriculture. And I'm, I'm glad to see that the wine industry is really starting to embrace it like other industries have. And, and, and we're so fortunate that they are. Um, if you want to learn more about Marquee, just visit their website at www.marquee.com. You can call them at one 888 marquee And join us again next week in the cellar when we talk about tailgating. Very serious time of year to do that. It is. We're in a good city to talk about tailgating. So. <laughs> in the meantime, to your help. Cheers.